Well, let's get the Labour's take now. We're joined by the Sec Shadow Secretary of State for Digital Culture, Media and Sport, Lucy Powell, who joins us now. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for being with us. Um, what is your reaction to Sue Gray's report? Well, I mean, it's, it's very revealing, isn't it? The industrial scale partying that was happening at Downing Street, the lack of judgment, the poor leadership, the fact that these things were allowed to go ahead uh, with great frequency and that they were sanctioned uh, in, in effect. And the Sue Gray report makes clear that that book really should stop with the Prime Minister and the political leadership of Downing Street. But we heard from the Prime Minister today that while he says he takes responsibility, he's not owning any responsibility at all because he's not taking any action himself or recognising that he himself is at fault. It seemed to be everybody else's fault but his own. The Sue Gray report, it obviously does, it obviously, you know, really condemn a lot of what went on in number 10. But at the same time, it does feel like it stops short of calling for Boris Johnson to resign, if you like. And she also says in her report, in her conclusions, that she's pleased that progress has been made in addressing the issues I raised. We heard Brendan Lewis saying that there have been changes of personnel in Downing Street. So do you accept that Sue Gray appears to be at least partially satisfied the, the government's listening? Well, look, at the end of the day, Sue Gray, although she's a woman of great integrity, I, I know mm. Sue, uh, and of course she is, and she did an independent inquiry, she is nonetheless a civil servant, and she makes that clear in her report as well, that it's not for her to issue disciplinary action or sanctions. It is for the political leadership of Number 10 Downing Street, i.e. the Prime Minister, to then take steps against those who are responsible. But she does say that she's pleased progress is being made. Well, some progress is being made, but she also says that this was an issue of leadership, of judgment and of political uh, leadership and that junior staff and others uh, often only took part in these events because they were sanctioned by the Prime Minister himself because he was at them. And, you know, that's why he's got to take responsibility uh, for, for this matter and also because he lied to Parliament. He came to Parliament and he said no such uh, parties took place, uh, nothing uh, happened and all the rules uh, were followed. And that clearly is now not the case. And I mean, that's he, why he really does need to resign he, and take responsibility. He argues that he said that in good faith, that he didn't believe that rules were broken. And he also points to the fact the police have only fined him for the one single event and that the other, event, the other events uh, that he's alleged to have taken part in, the police actually said that no rules were broken on his part. Well, he has got a fine. That means he did uh, break the law. That's what that means. He broke the law uh, quite clearly. And I think that is a resignation offence. He broke the law in Number 10 Downing Street, where there were 126 fines issued. If that had been a restaurant, a nightclub, a school or a hospital during the pandemic, it would have been shut down by the authorities for that level of uh, rule breaking and events uh, happening. And he says he, he thought that it was within the, the guidelines. I'm, I'm really sorry. I mean, he's either misleading us all and, and lying, which I believe is the case, or he's incredibly stupid. Um, and, you know, if he's incredibly stupid, then he's not fit to be Prime Minister either. And, um, you know, I think the bigger issue here is that all the while, the months and months we've been uh, talking about this issue, and I know your viewers, along with everybody else, will on, on one level be fed up uh, of hearing about this whole sorry affair. People's bills have been going through the roof and the cost of living is soaring and people are facing real hardship and challenges. And the government hasn't been able to focus on these big issues facing the country because they are at disarray and they, you know, they're, they're dysfunctional. There's a problem, though, isn't there? I'm um, just taking a step back today. There's a problem because Keir Starmer is also, of course, uh, being investigated by police for an alleged breach of COVID rules. And that makes it very, very easy for Boris Johnson to throw that right back at him, doesn't it? I don't think so, because Keir Starmer, unlike Boris Johnson, has said he would take the ultimate responsibility were he found to have broken, broken the law. And he said that if he is given a fine, which he uh, firmly believes he won't be, because this was uh, clearly was a, a work occasion and a, and a work uh, break 
uh, to have a, a takeaway with only work colleagues in a, in a small environment there away from home, but that if he is found to have broken the law, then he would resign. And, and that so sets are... him massively apart from the Prime Minister. But we are in a situation now, aren't we, where it appears more likely that Keir Starmer could end up resigning over Partygate than Boris Johnson? Well, I don't know that it appears more likely. Well, but it doesn't feel like it, Boris Johnson's about to resign, Well, no, it? that's because he won't ever do the honourable thing but it, and he won't do the right thing and he won't... He's not someone who will take responsibility but for it, his own actions. So it does look like it's more likely that Keir Starmer could lose his job over this, then, doesn't it? Well, I don't think it's more likely because I don't think Keir Starmer has broken uh, the rules, but, obviously, I think it's very unlikely that this particular Prime Minister will take responsibility for his own actions. Breaking the law in number 10, having parties on an industrial scale when we couldn't all go to people's funerals, we were having Christmas on Zoom, uh, you know, we were missing birthdays, missing loved ones, missing those really important times in life. And the Prime Minister stood up today in Parliament and seemed to suggest that he thought it was OK because... Uh, this was a well-deserving colleague who, who deserved a good toast and a, a send-off uh, as a leaving party. Well, I'm sure that many people watching this programme feel like their close loved ones deserved a good send-off for dying during COVID and they weren't uh, able to do that. And that is absolutely appalling. And I felt the Prime Minister today really had quite a tin ear about this whole situation. He seemed uh, to, to sort of bluster his way through not accepting any responsibility. It does feel, um, you know, as you say, that it looks unlikely uh, that Boris Johnson is going to lose his job, at least in, 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 imminently over this. You know, given that, you know, three in five voters, according to YouGov, think he should resign, electorally, is that quite a good thing for Labour? Well, I don't, I don't think it's a good thing for the country and but, I don't think it's a good thing for politics, actually. But because... electoral, do you th electorally, do you think it might be a good thing for Labour? Well, it's, it's not a good thing for the Conservative Party, so in, in that sense, you know, maybe so. But actually, I'm not really interested in that, to be honest. I'm interested in uh, us having a government that's able to govern and lead and deal with the very real crisis that people are facing today, which this government isn't able to do. We can't wait for a general election to solve this cost of living crisis. We need the government to take action now and we need them to take it on a scale and at a pace that is cons consummate with the crisis that we are facing and they're just not doing that. Well, we may hear a bit more on that, of course, because uh, we are going to get a statement from the Chancellor uh, tomorrow. Lucy Powell, thank you very much for being on the programme uh, this evening.